Well, I know this is a much different fight week than any other fight week, um, but you're kind of back in the routine again, back in the field. What, what does it feel like being back? It feels good. You know, it feels really good. I was, uh, I was hungry. I've been hungry. It's, uh, that break I had was exactly what I needed. It lit a fire in me. It brought the enjoyment and the happiness back in what I do because a lot of people don't realize that the, the fight itself is 15 to 25 minutes. You know, it's every other day, it's a training, every hour you spend in the gym, that's the rest of life. And that's what I had to come to groups with. I had to start enjoying again. And uh, having that break and just being away from the game and away from the training, away from the gyms, it just lit that fire, reinvigorated me. Nice. Was there like a day or a moment that you were like sitting at home and you're like, I'm ready to get back in there? Like what click that you're like, okay, now's the time? It's, uh, it, it was kind of like a, it's like a craving. You know, it was like a craving because I was keeping my way from the, myself away from the gyms, the thoughts of fighting. Because, like I said, when I left the game, I didn't leave the game, but like when I when I took a step away, they asked like when I come back. I was like, I don't know, let's see. Um, and then it, it started off like a craving. It just started like getting worse and worse and worse. And then they reached a point where I was like, Nah, I have to get back to work. This is what I was meant to do. This is what I was put on this planet to do. I'm sure of it. And. Uh, and then, yeah, and then I started speaking to the team and um, telling them how I feel, the problems that I had that led me here in the first place. And just that open dialogue and communication, we worked out the best system. And here I am, happy as Larry. That's what I was going to ask you. So is there like a change of approach now that like, okay, here's what I got to do to make sure that never happens to me again. You know, this is, this is the way we're going to handle things. Honestly, the, just the, the open dialogue, you know, the, more, the open communications is, is just massive. You know, being able to tell them how I'm feeling and get feedback like um like I'm not feeling this session or why I'm not feeling this session like just that just to be able to to to, to talk like that is just massive you know it's, it's done wonders for me that's nice uh the matchup itself you know coming back till what, what do you think about stylistically on paper I think people are pretty excited about it yeah did, did you think it was gonna be a fun one when they gave you the name yeah it should be a cracker you know we're both gonna go out there gonna head hunt should be fun yeah uh, everybody's getting used to fighting in front of no crowd, right? Yeah. But for you especially, last time out there was 57,000 people, yeah. right? Now, <laughs> now zero. What's, uh, man, what's the difference in that type of situation? Mate, I, <clears throat> that doesn't bother me too much. Like, I, The thing is, I'm just happy to be fighting overseas. <laughs> like, I, I, I've fought a lot in Australia, and I love fighting there. You know, all my f f fans and friends are there, but... Uh, but I've done it a lot. There's a lot of things that surround it. A lot of, a lot of media obligations. A lot of, a lot of hype building. And nothing gets bigger than the last one. <laughs> and the way it came crashing down. You know what I mean? So, um, just to be able to, just you know, experience as well as a huge draw for me with this, with with this career, if you would, is that I got to travel the world. I got to. For work, I got to visit exciting places. I got to fight in front of different crowds. I got to experience a side of life people can't. And you know, granted, it's a little restricted right now, but it's it's good. It's it's really good. This is why I signed up. I wanted to come to places like Abu Dhabi. Yeah, well, it's awesome. You can definitely see your your happiness back, man, which is great to see. <laughs> um, where do you think? I mean, where do you go from here? Are you thinking about that? Because obviously, you know, your status in the sport. I think everybody views you as a top contender. But are you thinking about championships and titles, or would you rather <clears throat> not have to think about that stuff? Yeah, well, I'm not I'm not worrying about it at all because a huge thing for me is just that I'm just enjoying the game. I'm enjoying the sport. I'm enjoying the gym because people view me as a top contender because I am a top contender and I'm one of the best in the world. And uh, I'm still only 29. And I, I think a lot of people forget that as well. So uh, I, I have enough time to walk away from the game and just train skill sets and come back a later time. I, I have the honestly, the the world is my oyster where I'm sitting. And I guess my biggest thing is uh, like I just want to enjoy it and earn a living. You know, and that's it. When we do, and as a team and as a family, like we're we're doing it together. So got to be happy with that. Rob, do you think because you had that burnout before? If you started feeling like that again, you'd be able to spot it way in advance. A hundred percent. I think that's a, the thing with those sort of, uh, I don't know what, what you'd call it, but those those things like burnout and overworking and 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 and, and those mental stresses, if you would. It's they happen generally pretty bad the first time, and then. But then you're, you're aware of it. If you deal with it properly, you're aware of it. You're aware of the symptoms leading up to it. You know, it, it becomes a, like you, you just, it's very hard for it to happen again. You're obviously known as like one of the hardest workers, especially in training in the sport. Do you think perhaps that environment with the guys you're working with, you can't really turn around to them and be like, guys, I need like a slow week this week. Do you think that perhaps contributed to it? Yeah, maybe. I, I think, 
I think certainly that the, the 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 way I was working before, like just the the lack of open dialogue, I guess, was may have been a symptom. But it, it's hard to say because the roller coaster I've been on in the last five years has been crazy. The changes and the ups and the downs and just the it's not just the fights I've won, which you know there were some. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's it's the um, it's the lifestyle changes that occurred with it as well. So I had three kids in, my, in the last five years on top of that. I've moved house four times. My lifestyle has changed from when I started to, to where I am today, drastically. You know, I went from a housing commission kid to someone owning their own house. That, that, it, it's massive things like that. And like I said, the fight is 15 to 25 minutes. It's everywhere else you have to deal with that you have to live with. Yeah, I remember reading a story. There's uh, like some tunes you used to run up, right? And you were mm. running up on Christmas Day. <clears throat> Yeah. Have you cut out the Christmas Day <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I will never train on Christmas Day again. <laughs> Trust me. Darren Till was a guy you wanted to fight. I remember when he beat Kelvin. Yeah. You were saying, like, oh, I've got to fight that guy. Like, what exactly is it about him that you want to fight him for? It just looks fun. You know, on paper, like, we, we just look good. You know, he, he goes out there headhunting. He's got good striking. I go out there headhunting. I've got good striking. It's, uh, it just looks like a fun fight. You know? Can you confirm you did more training for this than just chips and dips? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> nah, honestly, I, I, was, I was in the gym when, when I wrote that. Because I don't trust him and he doesn't trust me. You know, as cordial as we've been, and it's good to be like that. Because I think, I think you should be cordial. Like, uh, I think we should set role models for, for other people. Um, I don't, like, yeah, I don't trust him as far as I can throw him. <laughs> You know what I mean? After he said chips and dips, I'd train twice as hard. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's like, and I hope I hope he believes me. <laughs> I hope he didn't train because I trained my absolute ass off, and uh, I'm gonna come in there very very good, man. He uh, he said that you know fighters traditionally say oh they want to fight the best version of the opponent. He's like no, I'd rather fight the worst Robert Whittaker. Yeah. Way easier. I I hope he breaks his leg on the way in, <laughs> and then I'll fight him with a broken leg. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much more dangerous are you now that you've had the time off? You're you're refreshed, motivated. You know, I'd like to think I was always always dangerous. You know what I mean? It's um, but I'm just I'm just happy. I'm alive again. The fire for the sport has been lit. You know, I'm enjoying all the all the different angles of it. I'm enjoying media week, the media. I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying the the weight cut. I'm enjoying my time in isolation. It's that's a massive change. And, um, you know, just feeling this way means that I'm going to go in that octagon, happy as Larry, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to get to work. I'm just going to have fun. Because that's, that's what drew me to this sport, was that I enjoyed the sport. I enjoyed the combat aspect of the game. And, uh, yeah, I can't wait till, till Sunday. When was the last time you felt this way, do you think? This excited, this pump for, for a fight? Uh, a few years. Who knows? It's hard to, hard to pinpoint it because it's, it, it falls back on that whole thing where you don't really realise what's happening until it's too late. What was the best thing for you to take that time off in terms of getting away from, from the fight game and everything? What, what was the best thing? Uh, made significant pro uh, progress in Elder Scrolls Online. <laughs> so I have several capped tunes that I'm uh, um, you know, having, <laughs> having fun running with. Uh, what else? I know pumped heaps of bench. That was fun. Hit a new PB. So there's that. And uh, honestly, I spend tons of time with the family. Just waking up every day, seeing them, going to bed every day, doing the little things. Because obviously, when you're in fight camp and you're preparing for everything, it's I'm always tired. I'm, I'm away. I'm trying. Like I, I, I can't be a part of those those little things, like taking the kids to daycare, picking them up from daycare, you know, putting them to sleep, making their peanut butter sandwiches for lunch. Like, it's, to be able to do all those little things meant the world to me. You know, I guess that's also the silver lining with this whole pandemic is that I've just been able to spend so much time with my family. You've mentioned that you, part of, your, uh, of the job you love is traveling the road, but with, with this pandemic, the whole thing, when you, when, you, <laughs> when you go back, you won't be able to see them right away. Yeah. Does that make, make it harder for you? Um, 
there, there's two parts there's two parts of this the first part is I'm gutted that I'm not going to be able to see my family for, for the two weeks because now after this it's going to be close to a month I haven't seen my kids and my wife which, which will eat me inside obviously everyone knows I'm a big family man it'll, it'll kill me the second part is I'm so damn excited to spend every day playing video games and ordering, ordering whatever I want on room service because I'm not prepared for fighting, not cutting weight, there's nothing. So, yeah, it's, it's like a love-hate thing. I'm pretty sure I was built for quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was made for this. You've mentioned that uh, the past few months were, were tough for you for, for a lot of reasons. How hard was it to, to, to see on social media a lot of rumors about your daughter's health? I, so, so, so when it all when when I went on my break and everything, I, I kind of went away from social media. So I didn't realize until it had all gone like come out and everything. And I was like, honestly, the only thing it did more than anything is just open my eyes that media is full of shit. <laughs> no offense, you guys, you guys are the good ones, but. <laughs> 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 hey, you take the good or the bad, right? What would you say is your biggest weapon against Darren Till? And what do you think is the biggest threat that Till brings to the table? His biggest threat is his left hand. He knows that as well. And the thing is, like, that's, that's why I think I match up so much better uh, against him than he does with me. Because the, my biggest threat, there's too many of them. I have so many dangerous shots. I'm so creative. I have so many angles I can exploit. He's got his left hand. That's all he's got. Like everything else I got, I got covered. But he runs that down the pipe and he's so well at using it. You know, I'm not taking anything away from him. He's used it on a, a dozen guys, you know, and he's knocked him out. So I've got to be aware of that. I've got to give it the respect. But I've got so many angles he has to be aware of. And do we have, have a pick in Abizan against Costa fights? How do you think this fight goes? Ah... Uh, who can say? I think I think Adesanya has the skill set necessary to, to, to beat Costa. He's very technical. He's very good. He's a good fighter. Don't like him very much, but he's a good fighter. <laughs> um, but Costa's dangerous. He's so explosive. He's got mad cardio and he hits like a truck. And look at the size of him. I'm sure. I'm sure that does something. I'm sure that has something to do with why he keeps hurting people. <laughs> you know, like they say, size doesn't matter. Look at the size of him. You fight him then and tell me it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? So, yeah, let's 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 find out. Do you like Israel less now than you did before you fought? Now, to be honest, I don't like anybody in the middleweight division. Like, <laughs> that's it. That, that, that's it. Like, if you're in the middleweight division, I don't really like you. But I don't dislike you either. So don't get that confused. Don't dislike. Don't like. Neutral. <laughs> you have to have a, a, not a hate, but you have to have something against the guys you're fighting. No, not at all. I just don't want to be friends with them. Who wants to punch on with their friends? And I, I, I know some, I've heard of the fighters that do punch on their teammates. <laughs> you guys are fucking cracked. Like, you can't punch on with your mate. You go, you go to dinner with your friend and you got to punch on with him next week. He's like, no way. Like, that's stupid. Don't call yourself friends. No disrespect, my opinion. Sorry. <laughs> I'm entitled to that at least. 